Greetings, salutations, respect, and love, my precious little children. I am Scott. You are in the prog corner. And today, we're going to take it way back. We're going back a dozen years to 2011. We're going to look at the best prog rock albums of that year. But first, my favorite album of 2011 isn't even a prog album. It's Girls. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Uh, I love this album. This is a, the second and final album from Girls. The leader, uh, Christopher Owens, was raised in a cult. He finally broke free, he escaped the cult, only to get addicted to opiates. And he had to end Girls after two fantastic albums and one great EP. I love this album so much. But we're not talking about jangle pop or indie rock here this morning. No siree, Bob. We're talking about prog rock and the 25 greatest prog rock albums of 2011, starting at number 25. We're going to the UK, an amplifier and their magnum opus, Octopus. Uh, this thing is a double album. It's a kind of like a triple album, actually. Uh, it's their third LP. Um, they're from Manchester. They don't use any keyboards. Like they don't have a keyboard player, so maybe they sound a little bit like fellow uh, Manchester band Ocean Size. Maybe a little bit like Sweden's ACT. But they're fantastic. The band is led by Cell Balamir, and I love them. They have a brand new album that just came out uh, a couple weeks ago called Hologram. Really good at number twenty-four. It's Beardfish, uh, the Richard Soldier Bloom led uh, band from Sweden. He is now in Big Big Train, so I guess Beardfish is no more. Mammoth is their sixth album. Came right after Sleeping in Traffic Parts 1 and 2. So it's kind of in the middle of their discography for me. I really do like it, but there are some other records by them I like a little bit better. If you don't know Beardfish, kind of imagine, yes, Gentle Giant, uh, Blended Up and Frank Zappa's Blender, and you have an idea what they're all about. At number 23, it's the Comedy of Errors and their debut album, Disobey. They just dropped a brand new album last week, uh, so I haven't heard it yet. I'm really excited to hear that. I love them. They are neo-prog, and I'm not a big neo guy, but I will make an exception for Comedy of Errors. Absolutely. Some really great songs on here. Disobey. The Student Prince is 24 minutes long. And there's a weird song in here called American Rodeo <laughs> that just doesn't fit in, but it's cool. At number 22, we're going to the Ukraine and Carthagin's Lost Symphony. This was uh, the Ukrainian master Anthony Kalugin's fourth album as Carthagin. Yeah, he records his hogwash, Sunchild. He does his solo stuff, but the Carthagin stuff is my favorite stuff. Um, Great stuff on here. Basically, it's uh, the frog, the beast, and the wizard, the mysterious stories from the kite town, and the symphony of sound. That's it. You know, three tracks. They're all long. Uh, very camel-esque, I guess. If you don't know Carthagin, that would be a good place to start at number 21. Sean Filkins, War and Peace, and other short stories. This guy used to be the lead singer for Big Big Train, uh, pre-David Longden days, and this album is fantastic. Uh, it's his only solo album. I sure wish he'd drop another one. Uh, some really great guests on here. You have Lee Abraham, Dave Miros, John Mitchell, and you got two amazing epics. You got The Prisoner of Conscience, which clocks in at 30 minutes, and Epitaph for a Mariner, which is 20 minutes long, but this album is really, really good. At number 20, it's the Deer Hunter and the Color Spectrum. This was originally uh, nine different four-song EPs. Uh, so 36 songs in total. Uh, each of the nine EPs was supposed to represent the emotions and the feelings that a particular color give you. So this album is basically just uh, you know the best tracks from those nine EPs. Casey Crescenzo, big, big fan. Uh, yeah, this came out, like I said... Uh, right after Act 3 and right before Migrants, fantastic stuff. If you if you don't know The Deer Hunter, uh, check it out. You will not be sorry at number 19. Let's go to Italy with the Conscienza del Zeno, uh, their debut album. Yeah, this is straight up RPI, Rock Progressivo Italiano. These cats have four albums. I like all four of them. The singer's great on here. Alessio Calendriello, I love his voice. 
Um, you got a lot of fluid, a lot of strikes. It's just classic RPI by some youngsters. Fantastic stuff. Really like it. At number 18, it's Steve Hackett's Beyond the Shrouded Horizon. This is kind of where Steve Hackett's solo career really started picking up steam. This was his 22nd solo album, if you can believe it. And uh, it's on here primarily because of the epic. This uh, turned this Island Earth. I love it. It's got Chris Squire and Simon Phillips on this track. What a, what a rhythm section that is. But you got Nick Beggs on the album. You got Rob Townsend on the album. You know how Steve Hackett brings in all the A-listers. And this is a phenomenal album from Steve at number 17. It's Dream Theater. Yeah, it's a dramatic turn of events, and I guess it really was for them with, uh, you know, the great Mike Portnoy leaving the band, being replaced by Mike Mangini, which uh, I guess he had played with uh, James Labrie and his band, so there was some, you know, a little bit of chemistry there. This is their 11th album, their first without Portnoy. It's a little bit lighter than the last two Portnoy Dream Theater albums, not quite as dark and bleak and heavy and metal-y. Lost But Not Forgotten, what a great track that is. Bridges in the Sky, Breaking All Illusions, one of, one of the better Dream Theater albums for sure, at number 16. It's Yes, Fly From Here, uh, the first Yes album without John Anderson since 1980s drama. You have Benoit David here. They redid this thing with Trevor Horn singing it. I prefer the original 2011 Fly From Here, but there are some interesting things in the uh, return trip. Um, this is basically just Yes trying to do drama part two as all of side one was material that they had worked on back in the drama era and then side two some shorter tracks it's a good little album i like it a lot at number 15 how about white willows terminal twilight oh jacob home lupo's band this thing is fantastic this is their sixth album you've got the great sylvia uh Skelestad on vocals just fantastic you got matthias olsen drumming on this thing you got tim bonus singing a song uh, that kansas regret song he's on there but uh, this album opens up with Hawks Circling the Mountain. Wow, one of my favorite tracks of all time. Just a really, really cool album. Probably my favorite White Willow album. Although they've got a couple really good ones, so I don't know. At number 14, it's The Tangent and Calm. This was uh, Andy Tillerson's uh, act where this time he's got a... Uh, this is the only album that had this particular lineup. Uh, Luke Matchin on uh, guitar. Theo Travis, who's always around. Uh, Jonathan Barrett on bass. And Nick Rickwood, the only time he ever drummed with the band, is on this album. But this album's got the Wiki Man on it. It's got uh, Titanic Calls Carpathia and the tech support guy. I'm a little salty because the... Uh, the vinyl version does not have tech support guy on it, man. Uh, that made me a little bit upset because I like that song a lot. At number 13, it's the Agents of Mercy in their third and final album, The Black Forest. Well, I guess it's their final album. It's been 12 years and we haven't seen a fourth album, so I guess we might be done. This, of course, is Royna Stalt, uh, the great Nad Sylvan on vocals, and you've got uh, uh, Lolly Larson on keyboards. He's amazing, and you got Wally Walgren on drums. What a cool band. This is kind of a concept album. Um, Freak of Life is on this album. It's so good. If you like the Flower Kings, you're going to love Agents of Mercy. Uh, some people don't like Nad's voice, but they're wrong, man. They're dead wrong. Nad's great at number 12. It's Haken's sophomore album, Visions. Yeah, Aquarius was fantastic. I think I might prefer it. Maybe, I don't know, man. They're so close, Visions and Aquarius. Both amazing records. The 22-minute title track is just awesome. But then you've got Nocturnal Conspiracy, which might be my favorite Haken song. Um, yeah, These guys are not Dream Theater clones at all by any means. Don't get it twisted at number 11. It's Glass Hammer and Corcordium, their 12th album. The second one with John Davison on vocals. The first one was If. The third one was Perilous. Uh, but this one here is called Corcordium. Um, it's Fred Shendell and Steve Babb. You know how those guys do down there in Chattanooga, Tennessee, doing their uh, symphonic prog thing. Um, 
The song To Someone is on here. I love that track. Um, there are six songs on this album, over 10 minutes long. Yeah, If you like Yes, there's no reason in the world why you wouldn't like Glass Hammer. And now we're in the top 10, boys and girls. At number 10, straight out of Japan, it's Asturias and Fractals. Man, Yo Oyama, I love this guy's music. He's a fantastic composer. I don't know what he plays on these albums. I think maybe he's like a bass player or something. I don't know. But really, the star of the show here is the violin player, Tay Senna. Just incredible. This is all instrumental stuff. Yeah, With the violin going, it does sound maybe a little like Kansas or Dixie Dregs. But instead of playing American kind of inspired melodies, these are clearly Japanese folk melodies that have been reworked into an electric rock band. Just incredible. Uh, Sweet of Fate. That's the track on this album that you really need to hear at number nine. Let's go to Norway and Magic Pie, their third album, The Suffering Joy. I love this band. They've got five albums out. All five are really, really good. If you want your prog with a little bit of you know muscle to it, maybe a little bit of stadium rock thrown in there, this could be your band. They are led by Kim Steinberg, the guitarist and songwriter. You've got two vocalists here, Eric or Hawkson, who's got that real you know rock and roll kind of voice, and Eric Hansen. Uh, he's got more of a cleaner voice. Uh, obviously, the... Uh, the highlight of this album is the 24-minute epic called A Life's Work. It's fantastic. At number eight is Fido, Xavier, and Snow Torch. Man, I put the word out on my community tab over the weekend, and I cannot believe how many of you people uh, suggested that Snow Torch be the number one album of 2011. I've got it here at number eight. Perhaps it's a little low. Uh, this might be my favorite album from him. If you're not familiar with uh, Fido's music, Fido, however you pronounce it, I don't know. So, you know, I know the comments are going to light up about what an idiot I am that I can't pronounce his name, but it's all good. This is his ninth album. Um, it's uh, part of the... Uh, just just a fantastic thing. It's part of this whole new thing that's going on in Prague where you take some of the uh, the musical vocabulary from the 70s and reinvent it into a modern way. Just fantastic. Really, really good. Um, it's basically three songs. You got a real long song, Snow Torch Part 1. Then you got a short song called Helix. And then Snow Torch Part 2, which is also long. Really, really great at number seven. How about some Opeth with Heritage? This was their 10th album, uh, the last one with Per Weibergs on uh, keyboards. He had played also on Ghost Reveries and Watershed. Um, this is the first uh, Opeth album with the clean vocals since 2003's Damnation, and they have not looked back ever since. Uh, it's been Clean Vocal City. So this album it was really a courageous move by Michael Ackerfeld. Um, you've got that amazing Travis Smith artwork. I mean, just look at that tree, man. How cool is that thing? Uh, yeah, this had some... Uh, uh, Stephen Wilson cooperation here. He considers this part of a trilogy. Uh, this one here, uh, Grace for Drowning and Storm Corrosion all kind of came out about the same time. Kind of had the same feel. Just amazing. I love clean vocal Opeth. I really do. One of these days I might get into the Death Growls. Who knows? At number six, back to Italy with Ske and 1000 Atumni. This is Paola Bota. Uh, he's the keyboard player from Yugen. Uh, he's played with uh, French TV on this album, his debut solo album. Uh, he enlists uh, members of Cicada to help flesh out the music. This is very uh, avant-garde symphonic music. It, uh, symphonic prog rock with all kinds of avant-garde stuff. Uh, he's got a second album that came out in 2021 called Insolubilia. That's really great, too. He's two for two. Uh, let's hope he's got a third album in him because, man, this ski stuff is great. At number five, this might be a bit of a surprise. I think a lot of people probably have this at number one. It's Stephen Wilson's Grace for Drowning, his second solo album. It's a double album, and, man, you know, you talk about dudes with a great Rolodex. 
listen to the people he's got playing on this album, man. Trey Gunn, Steve Hackett, Jordan Rudas, Tony Levin, uh, Nick Beggs, Pat Mastelato, Theo Travis, Dave Stewart, Dave Kersner. This album is amazing. Uh, his first solo album was a little more experimental. This one here really rang the bell for Porcupine Tree fans around the world. It's fantastic. It even got nominated for a Grammy. That's just crazy. At number four, we're going to Detroit Rock City and Discipline to Shatter All Accord, their fourth album. The last one with their great guitarist, John Preston Buddha, who moved on. He was not on their uh, most recent album. This album is just amazing, man. Matthew Parmenter just really hits all the notes. Yeah, it's a little Vandergrab generator E, but is that really such a bad thing? This album's got the song Rogue on it, which is one of my favorite songs. Um, this album came out 14 years after Unfolded Like Staircase. So clearly these guys are in no hurry to produce music. I just love what they do. Fantastic band. Waiting for a new album from the guys from Discipline. And uh, maybe some live shows too. At number three, we're going back to Norway with Wobbler's third album, Rights at Dawn. This was the first one with the uh, great vocals of uh, Andres Prestmo. Uh, they had another singer on their first two albums. He had a deeper voice. Prestmo is perfect, man. He is the exact right guy for Wobbler. It took Wobbler to a whole new level. Um, you know, one of the things that people talk about old prog versus new prog was old prog had all the great singers. You got the Peter Gabriels and the John Andersons and the, you know, John Wettens and the Greg Lakes. Who do we have? Well, I'm going to put Andres Prestmo right up there with the greats. Um, this album is only 46 minutes long. And I remember when I played it for my older brother, he's like, man, that sounds like Fragile Part 2. He is not wrong. It is certainly their most yes-like album. And with songs like The River and In Orbit, who cares? It's just amazing. I love Wobbler. You guys know it. There's a new Wobbler-related album coming out in a couple weeks called The Chronicles of Father Robin, which we're going to be getting into later. But anyway, now it's time for number two. And we're going to France with Nemo and Revolution. Jean-Pierre Louboutin's uh, amazing French prog band. This is their seventh album. I absolutely adore Nemo. I love JPL. You guys know how I feel about him. Um, this album's got some really cool up-tempo, uh, really fun shorter tracks on the front end. And then towards the back end, you've got Loins D.U., which is like 25 minutes long. It's basically part two of the Barbarous Epic, which was on the previous album. So you put those two albums together, man. You just got so much greatness coming out of France. I love JPL. One of my favorite prog artists of all time. Absolutely. But at number one, I've got my favorite prog artist of all time. Yeah, and if you guys are regular viewers of this channel, you can probably guess who it is. It's Neil Morse and Testimony 2. Yeah, this is uh, his second part of his uh, testimony about his conversion to Christianity. But don't let that get in your way, man. These are songs about how that impacted his life, his marriage, uh, his relationship with his family, his relationship with his bandmates, his relationship with God is actually really secondary to all those other concerns. So don't let the subject matter scare you off, man. This album is absolutely perfect. You got the old boys from Spock's Beard back. Alan Morris, Dave Miros, and Nick DiVirgilio come in to sing Time Changer, and it sounds just like Spock's Beard. Uh, Steve Morris and Paul Boletowitz both, uh, you know, put their guitar chops on this album. Oh, man. Uh, the bonus disc is just amazing. Seeds of Gold, Supernatural, Absolute Beginners. But the main disc tells the story of Neil's conversion and uh, what it meant in his life. It ends with uh, probably my favorite Neil Moore song, which is Crossing Over slash uh, Mercy Street Reprise. Just incredible. I love it so much. I love you guys. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a really interesting uh, next couple of weeks, but uh, I'll keep you posted on all the comings and goings and the ins and the outs and all this, that, and the other thing. Anyway, I am Scott. I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. Free Tibet. And God save the king. Peace. In the Middle East.